Hey everybody, we are making a quick uh, screen capture recording of what it is like to be doing some of these polynomial assignments. Um, I know it can seem a little bit daunting at first. I'm just going to work up from the bottom. I think this is the way to go. They get harder as they go up. So start with the lowest one first. So if I click on that and then go to start, you're going to get zeros of polynomials in factored form. You can have slightly different uh, questions, but similar. I'll go through as many of, a, any of these as I can in about 10 minutes to give you guys a little heads up. So the zeros are when you are going to cross the x-axis. It is when you are going to be able to plug in a value that gives a zero. And the beauty of factored form is that that is quite straightforward. You can ask, when is this going to be a zero? That's at negative two. So if I click right there, I should get a point at negative two. When is this going to be zero? Write a little sidebar equation, 2x minus 3 equals 0. If I add 3 to both sides, it's when 2x equals 3. Divide by 2, it's at 3 halves. 3 halves is right there. That's 1.5. And then finally, when is that 0? When I plug in a positive 3 at 0. So that should work. Let's see. I got the confetti, okay? So that's pretty straightforward. Let me go to the next one. And it is going to be this one. This is asking for me to do the factoring, okay? So if I go to my um, ability to write here, I can factor an x out of there, and I can factor a 3. Always take out the greatest common factor. So 3x gets pulled out, and then what gets left behind is going to be a quadratic. And when I pull out a 3x from there, I'm left with x squared. And then... When I pull a 3x out of that, I'm left with minus x. And then finally, when I pull a 3x out of 18x, I will get a, po a negative 6x. I'm sorry, I can't write better. But then when I factor this, I'm going to get x minus 3 when I factor that. And I will then get x plus 2. So that makes it pretty clear that my zeros are going to be when each of these three things is zero. And that will happen at zero right there. Three times zero is zero. The whole thing becomes zero. And at positive three and at negative two. So if I go positive three, negative two, and zero. Positive three, negative two, and zero. It's easy to make a mistake. Let's hope I didn't. And I didn't. All right. I'm going to go on to the next one. And that is intervals. Okay, a little bit different. But this is where if you graph it a few times on Desmos, hopefully this will make sense. Um, if you think about the graph, right? And I'm going to try to quickly sketch this out in approximate form. Well, that's a bad axis. Anyway, I'm going to get a positive 2 will be one of my zeros. Oops, it doesn't like... Oh, come on, you. Um, positive 2, maybe I can make it out there. 1, 2, there's a 0. And then negative 4, so way out there. I won't click on it because I think I'm selecting it. And then at negative 5, and then at positive 1 right there, and then finally at positive 9. So it's really clear to see where the zeros are there. And they even tell you, okay? But they're asking about this interval here. So just when you plot them out, find out... Does, does this go entirely between two dots or does it incorporate a third dot? So negative 4, these are done in order for us, which is nice. So negative 4 and 1 are ones that are next to each other. If it had been negative 4 and 2, I would have had to be careful about the 1 there. And this might be sometimes positive and sometimes negative. Because remember, these things usually go, you know, they'll go like this and something like that. So you just want to know where are these intervals. Well, these are two adjacent dots, so all I need to do is pick a point in between, and the easiest point in between 1 and negative 4 is 0. So I just plug in 0, and all I need to do is pay attention to is it positive or is it negative. When I plug in a 0 there, that's negative. When I plug in a 0 there, that's positive. When I plug in a 0 there, that's positive. Got the idea? Plug in a negative, sorry, plug in a zero there, and that's negative, and a negative. 
When I multiply all these together, what do I get in that interval? When I've plugged in a zero, I will get these canceling out. Those are plus, so I will get a remaining negative, okay? So this is always negative on this interval, always negative. If they had chosen not between negative four and one, but if they had chosen between negative four and two, then I wouldn't know if I was in the realm of zero or in the realm of 1.5, and I might get it positive because I might be up here, okay? Anyway, so oops, I am right there, and that should be it. Yay, okay. Then my last one I'll do, if I have time, is this one, zeros with multiplicity. This is where you'll see, that's what I call a bounce. And right here, right there, that's what I call a bounce, where it goes and it touches and comes back up. What we know is this is a fourth degree polynomial because why? Because it goes up at both ends. And even though it only crosses in three places, this one counts double. So I'm going to have a zero at x plus two, right? And then I'm going to have, that's for that one right there. And then I'm going to have another one here at 2.5. So that's kind of tricky. I'll let you think about how I knew to write this. Okay, think about that. How did I get 2.5 into this? Now this one is at is x is 0, so what happens is this one is going to be x squared. Okay, so what is the question asking now? Let's see what it says. What could be the equation? You'll see right there which one matches up. Oh, it looks like I got it right off the bat. There's that first one, okay? So without even looking at my options, I was able to do it. You guys will be able to compare your options and see. If something goes like this, down and up, and it's a fifth degree, you can have a triple bounce where it goes down and then it bounces and then goes below. So that would be when it would be a third degree and it'll be, I think, fairly cl clear when you get those. But I think typically it's going to be ones like this that just go and turn around and do not go through and give you just a squared term like that x squared term. All right, check our answer. And I think we're good to go. Good luck on that homework.